In this video, we're going to talk about parallel lines and perpendicular lines and the slopes that they have. Okay? Here in this graph, we have two lines that appear to be parallel, and they are parallel. Okay? Now, let's remember what parallel lines, what the definition of parallel lines is. It's two lines that are on the same plane that never intersect. Okay? So they, and we know from experience that it also means that they're kind of going in the same direction. So already we're thinking, if they're going in the same direction, I'll bet you they have the same slope. As it turns out, that is absolutely true. And we can show that to be true. Uh, here are two lines. Uh, we can calculate the slope of these two lines. Uh, let's first look at the blue line. From this point to this point, my x is increasing by 2, my y is increasing by 1, which means I have a slope of 1 half. This orange line here, my x is increasing by 2, my y is increasing by 1, which means I have a slope of 1 half. Now, will these points, will these lines ever intersect? The answer is, no, they won't. And it's easy to see why they won't. Because look, this blue line, this point is directly above this point here. I can draw a point that is directly below it. And because the slopes are the same, as I move to the, to the uh, right a certain number of units, I will always move up the corresponding number of units in both lines, okay? So in these lines, as I move to the right two units, I will always move up two units. And these two points will both still be four units apart. So as I go up, these two points, one right above the other, are always going to be four units apart. apart. In order for the lines to intersect, at some point, I would have to have the lines, I would have to have these two points, one right above the other, actually meeting in the same point. But as I see, that's never going to happen. They're always going to be four units apart. And it's not just with these particular lines. I could make these lines, they're also four units apart. Or these two lines, they're also four units apart. Or I could take lines that are closer together, for instance, these two. They're no longer four units apart, but now they're one unit apart. It's still something, okay? It's not nothing. As long as it's not nothing, they're not intersecting. One unit apart, one unit apart, one unit apart, one unit apart, one unit apart. They're always one unit apart. So what we're finding is, if lines have the same slope, they're definitely parallel lines. If they don't have the same slope, then at some point they will meet, and they're not going to be parallel lines. And so what that tells us is, that if you have two parallel lines, they definitely have the same slope. So the if-then conjecture goes both ways. Parallel lines have the same slope, and lines of the same slope are definitely parallel. Now let's look at the more interesting case, I think, and that's perpendicular lines. Okay? Uh, here we have a line, okay? And we can measure the slope of this line. Uh, the slope of this line we're, uh, is 1, 2, 3, 4. My x is increasing by 4 and 1, 2, 3. My y is increasing by 3. So that means that the slope is 3 fourths. Okay? Now, let's remember what perpendicular means. Perpendicular means that the lines are going to intersect making right angles. Okay? So what I can do is I can take this line and I can just turn it to the point where it's making a right angle. But instead of turning it, instead of turning just it, I'm going to turn everything, including my little triangle there that I used to calculate the slope. So now I have perpendicular lines here, but what I see is this triangle, when it moved, the horizontal part is now vertical, and the vertical part is now horizontal. So whereas my original line had a slope of 3 fourths, this line, the difference in the y's is 3, and the difference in, I'm sorry, the difference in the y's is 4, and the difference in the x's is 3, and moreover, it's going down now. So this line has a slope of negative 4 thirds. This one, 3 fourths. This one, negative 4 thirds. So what we get is a line that has a slope that is the negative reciprocal of that first line. Let's look at another example. Here we have uh, another triangle, another line. And uh, let me just move this whole thing over. 
Oops. Okay. So we have uh, another line, and this line slope is 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's 6 over 2, so the slope is 3. And sure enough, as I go over 1, I'm going up 3. And so uh, let's do the exact same thing. Let's uh, just turn the whole thing. And uh, now this side corresponds to this side. So now my x is increasing by 6 and my y is decreasing by 2. So I get, although this, the, the original one had a lot, had a, the original line had a slope of 3, this new line, this perpendicular line, has a slope of negative 1 third. Okay? Again, it's the negative reciprocal of that original slope. Uh, another example. Okay? This time we have a negative slope, and... Uh, my x is increasing by 2, my y is decreasing by 4, so that tells me my slope is negative 4 over 2, or negative 2. And sure enough, as I go over 1, I'm dropping down 2, over 1, dropping down 2. Okay? Let's turn that figure again. So now we have perpendicular lines, and my new line, instead of having a negative slope, has a positive slope. And it's going up to and over 4. So whereas my original line had a slope of negative 2, my new line, my perpendicular line, has a slope of positive 1 half. Again, positive 1 half is the negative reciprocal of negative 2. Last uh, example here, and that is uh, this one. Let me move this over as well. And uh, so this, uh, actually I think I moved it over a little too far. This line has a slope of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to the right 5, and 1, 2, 3. I'm going down 3, so it has a slope of negative 3 fifths. And I can already see my perpendicular line is going to have a positive slope, but let's just go ahead and check it out and see what it's going to look like. It has a slope of, now I'm going up 5 and over 3, so the original line had a slope of negative three-fifths. The perpendicular line has a slope of positive five-thirds. So as you see, any, li any, any two perpendicular lines, one line has a slope that is the negative reciprocal of the slope of the other line. Okay? So how do we use this? Well, let's say we have... Uh-oh, come back. There we go. So let's say we have uh, a problem that we have to, to solve here. Uh, this says, find the equation of the line that goes to the point 4, 3 that is parallel to the line 3x plus 4y equals 18. Ah, standard form. Okay. Well, if they're parallel, what did we just learn? That that means they have the exact same slope. So what I want to do, my line has the same slope as this line and it goes through this point. So what I have to do is, first I have to find the slope of that line right there. So what do I do? I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides, and I'm going to get 4y equals negative 3x plus 18. And now I'm going to divide everything by 4, and I get y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 18 fourths, and I could probably simplify this 18 fourths, but I really don't care about it. This is the only part that I was really interested in, that negative 3 fourths, because that tells me what the slope is of that line. And that tells me that the slope of my line is also negative 3 fourths. So now I know I have the slope of negative 3 fourths, and my point, hk, is 4, 3, and I can use the point-slope formula. And I can say y equals negative 3 fourths times x minus 4, I'm plugging that in, plus 3. Ah, I can do this. Negative 3 fourths x 
Now, when I distribute the negative 3 fourths, I have negative times negative. That's going to become positive. And 3 fourths of 4 is just 3. So plus 3 plus 3. And that's y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 6. And that's my answer. All right. OK? One last problem to solve. This time we have, find the equation of the line that goes to the point negative 2, 9, that is perpendicular. OK, perpendicular means the slopes are going to be negative reciprocals of each other to the line y equals negative, negative 2 fifths x minus 14. Well, fortunately, this time I have my, uh, my equation written in uh, slope-intercept form. So I can very quickly look at this and say, hey, there's my slope right there. That's the slope of the perpendicular line. So the slope of my line is going to be positive 5 over 2. Okay, so my slope is positive 5 over 2. And I'm going through the point negative 2, 9. So HK is negative 2 and 9. And so this time I have Y equals 5 halves times x minus negative 2. I'm going to write that as x plus 2 plus 9. And that's just 5 halves x plus 5 halves of 2 is 5 plus 9. And that's y equals 5 halves x plus 14. And we are done. Sure enough, if I were to graph this line and this line, I would see that they are uh, perpendicular to one another and that this line does go through the point negative two nine.